Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to model the So Polo uh, telephone manhole cover. And uh, this was br uh, brought to me uh, by Fernando through uh, Patreon. And uh, if you'd like to make your own suggestions, check out my Patreon page. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, first, thing we need to do is create a just a polyplane uh, because what I what I want to do is I want to take this image and I want to uh, transfer it onto a cylinder. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create uh, just a polyplane and assign new material. I have the image already in a folder, so I'm going to click here and just attach. There it is. And the thing is, it's not going to be centered. So we have to center it. And to do this, I'm just going to leave the image the way it is. It's fine. I'm going to make a cylinder. And we need to count, do a little math. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six, 12 in total. So that means we should divide this, something that's divisible by 12. Let's do 36. That should be good. Now let's actually go higher. Let's do 64. Okay. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple caps like this and then delete the bottom. So all I have left is this cylinder here. And then I'm going to line this up, get rid of the grid so it doesn't uh, confuse us, and line this up like this. All right, that's good. And then I'm going to freeze it. So I'm gonna clear history, freeze. Okay, uh, so now what I wanna do is I wanna apply this uh, image onto this cylinder. So just apply Lambert 2. But you can see it's not lined up, but there's a trick we can use. And that is that because this uh, plane is larger than this cylinder, if I have both of them selected, and then I'm gonna go into UV and open up planar, I'm gonna change it to Y. Uh, so this is, should be set to bounding box. And I'm gonna uh, have keep image ratio on, click apply. What this will do is it will project using the largest polygon. And since the largest polygon is um, this plane, it's going to line up the projection, which will match the plane and put the UVs for the cylinder in the exact right spot, just like that. So if we hide this, you can see that now the UVs are in the right spot. So if we take a look, you can see what happened. It projected them exactly. And now I'm going to add some loops this way. All right, so let's add. And we're not actually modeling uh, the final uh, thing yet. We're just kind of arranging things. Let's see, how does that line up? Not so great. All right, so I'm going to delete this and now I need to center it. So first thing I need to do is go into in here and I'm going to select this uh, ring here. Now if the uh, if the loop that you have is not the right size, we can change it. I'm going to turn autocomplete off, select the edges in the middle here like that. And then I can click and drag and hit enter. Then delete this one. Now you can't scale. The thing is you can move stuff in UV view, but you cannot move stuff in 3D view because if you move it in your viewport, it'll just move the image. We don't want to do that. But if we move it in here, then everything will be okay. So and this is what we'll do. So I'll just move this and you can see as I'm moving it in UV view, this starts to line up. So I can move this up like that. Like 
this. You can see now that's lined up. And now we can add more loops. Turn our complete back on. Like that. So you can see it's lining up pretty well. Now I'm going to take this and rotate it until it lines up. Uh, so I'm going to bring the grid back. Alright. Put it below the grid. Center that and then rotate so that that and that matches. And you can see that it doesn't match exactly, so we know there's some perspective shift there, but it's it's okay. Will give us a good start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up one side and ignore the other. So. I think that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. And put 12 in there. No, that's not gonna work. 12. Okay, so let's do a little math. 360 divided by 64 times 2. So it should be 11.25. Okay, and now this line is straight. Okay, so that's good. Now let's isolate some of this because we don't want to work on too much. Like that. That's good. And now we need to recreate this pattern. And the way I want to do this, I want to make sure that when I'm making this pattern that uh, it's repeatable and that it's flat because we're going to extrude because I want to have nice bevels uh, where it's touching the geometry so first I'm gonna make a, a just a, using the EP curve tool I'm gonna make a curve like this I'm gonna duplicate it and then rotate it like this and so this should be 30 so this is the section that we're gonna make and then I want to make another line in the middle because we only need to work on half of that section. So 15. So this is what we're actually going to make. See? Okay. Now, let's start uh, working. So I'm going to make a cylinder. I'm going to hold C. Uh, once I'm going to press W to activate the move tool. Then I'm going to hold C and middle drag on this curve and you can see I'm dragging along the curve here. I'm gonna rotate this 15 degrees, just like that curve, and then set this to six. And so now we need to rotate this, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's turn that on. And then I'm going to add a couple of caps. That's perfect. You can see it actually lines up really well. And so this and this is the same. So I'm going to duplicate. Hold C again, middle drag. And then I can see move this over like that. And we only need this much. Shift select, delete. Okay, so now we need to make this section. And 
want to make sure that this line is rotated in the right place. So I'm just going to rotate this a little bit to make sure that everything here is good. So we'll maybe scale this up a little, scale this. And then this uh, line here is parallel to this one and should be the same thickness. So I can duplicate this. Just select that. Just move it here. And if I want to find the center, I can just uh, set this to multi and insert edge loop there. Move the pivot. Uh, I'm going to hold D and C, middle drag the pivot here, snap there. And then if I select these vertices here, I'm going to hold Control Shift, right click, turn on keep spacing, then I'm going to. Uh, make sure I'm still on the move tool now I'm gonna hold D and C and move the pivot here so now the pivot for those vertices is on this edge I can then hold C again just C middle drag along this edge and this will move those vertices out like that and this here uh, we'll just make out of a cube that is a plane okay plane fine too need one division here and then rotate this sixty negative sixty like that scale this I can then select these vertices here scale those scale those now right now I want to move these vertices in this direction so I'm gonna hold control shift right click and then set this to object. This will orient the manipulator to the object, which is that uh, plane. And then I can scale this, move this this way. Now, if we want this to be exact, we can also duplicate, kind of like line this up until we see that where this should be, just as a guide, and then delete. Okay. Not bad. Okay, this triangle will make a plane. So once I make a plane, you can see it's in the outliner. All I need to do is hold C and middle drag along this curve and it'll snap it to this curve. So I don't have to zoom out and bring it in. I can just uh, snap it, move the pivot there, align the, align the triangle here like this scale and then delete this vertex okay now we need uh, this little cog here. So that will make. We can just take this one and reuse it. So I'll place it here. For the cog, we don't need this line here. So scale this out on that. Okay. That's good. So I need to just cut this. So I'm going to use the. Uh, you can use the multi cut tool. You just click outside, drag through. If you don't get it right the first time, just undo and redo. Oh, I'm not getting it in the same spot. There, fine. That's good. It doesn't have to be super perfect. So for this, I'm going to use insert edge loop tool, set it to multi. Eight half, and now I'm just gonna hide this for a sec and hide the grid. And for this, we don't need that or this. Now we need to cut this in half. So I'm gonna go in here, set this multi like that, 
And then we just need to make these connections. There, and then we this. Okay. I'm gonna then select all the faces. Uh, so I'm gonna holding Control and Shift, right clicking, setting this to World, and turning off Keep Spacing. I can pre-select the Y direction, hold X, and just middle drag until it snaps where I need it to, like that. Okay, so now we need to combine this. So I'm just going to use the multi cut tool and just cut this way. Like that. And I'm going to temporarily make a cut like this from here to here. Here, that should be good for now. Okay, now we need to combine. All right, so let's combine, then merge vertices. I'm gonna press three to preview, make sure everything's merged, and then we can unhide that cylinder, and then keep going. Okay. So next thing I want to have this piece and this piece so that we have something to kind of anchor this to and for that I'm just going to make a cylinder scale this out and add divisions so let's see and we're looking for a line down the middle so 64 60 okay that's going to be let's try 90 120. Okay, that's a lot. Suck. Let's see. Um. Aha, so we just need to add 12. So 72. Plus 12 is 84. Uh, 84 is good. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate. I'm gonna shift select. Uh, so when you duplicate, let me just go over this again. If I duplicate this, it duplicates without history. Uh, you can change this, but I usually like to duplicate without history. So instead, once I duplicate, I'm gonna hold shift and just drag a selection over both of them. This will deselect the new one and select the previous one. And then I can just scale the previous one and change its options. So for this, let's do 120. Okay, that'll be good. Get rid of this and get rid of this. Now I'm going to select this edge loop, extrude, and scale. Pivot and snap here. We also don't need a lot of loops here, and I made a mistake there. So, see, we have an edge here and edge here, but I don't have that there. So, let's just quickly remake that one. Always pay attention. Okay, 48 plus 48, 96. Yep, that's what we need. Okay. Okay. 
By the way, I changed, I made my own hotkey for center pivot. You can uh, make your own if you want in the hotkey ed editor. I just made mine control shift C. I'm gonna add this to a layer so it's easy for me to turn it on and off. There. So these need to be flipped. So reverse. You can also find reverse under mesh display reverse. Select that and then combine. And you can see this already kind of fits pretty well. I'm going to add an extra loop because we need to start uh, thinking about combining these things. So just like that. There. Let's preview. That looks great. And this edge here is could be a problem because we have a six-sided that's split in two. So I'm gonna move the pivot back to origin. So I'm gonna freeze transformations and then reset transformations. I'm going to then duplicate scale in negative. Uh, one in Z and then rotate this 30 degrees You can see now they're connected so I'm going to just combine merge vertices and preview And you can see This is giving us a weird uh, because there's a line down the middle. It's giving us a weird uh, division here a weird smoothing in the circle area so we need to fix that. Let's see. So there's a couple ways we can do it. We can either get rid of uh, this edge loop here, or we can add extra loops from this point and this point. So we can have some down the middle. So I think we should do that. That'll give us a better result. So I'm going to, I made a new cylinder. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to set it to 12. And then rotate it. Uh, let's see, we need to rotate this 15 degrees. So this is going to be our new guide. And you can see it should look like that. And if we preview our layer here, that's the size of that hole. So we'll hide that. All right. Uh, I'm going to temporarily delete this loop here. And then I'm going to just snap the existing ones to these vertices on this cylinder. And we just need to add two more. So I'm going to go from here to here, hold shift, like 
that and then snap those, just holding V. And we just need to reconnect these lines, get rid of this. Okay. Uh, then let's see. We need to get rid of this hole here. I'm going to snap this back down, and then I'm going to extrude. Scale down. Then I'm going to grow selection, shift greater than, and then scale back up. And that will just give me a nice clean bevel like that. We need to do the same on this side. Or we can just do this. this select this guy duplicate move it there invert delete right here there it's close enough yeah that'll work select both combine Merge and see the threshold's not, not enough, so I'm going to hold control, click this, and drag there. All right, so now we need to actually fill this hole. So extrude that. I'm going to click fill hole and then I'm going to cut this way and then this way. And then once here and here. And then same here. We could have done this before we duplicated and combined, but oh well. Forgot to extrude. Okay. There it is. That looks good. All right. We also forgot to add a bevel inside there. That's okay. We'll add a loop in here. I'm gonna double click this loop. By the way, um, when you double click an edge loop, you can see that it stops when there's a, a vertex with more than uh, four edges. So instead, you can use contiguous edges. You can also uh, hold control right click and then uh, let's see where is it in here maybe it's not in here uh, but let's see, it should be under select contiguous edges that one and that will select edges based on uh, their angle and then I can take the pivot snap it to the grid and then scale from there Let's see like that. that'll give us a bevel there okay so next step all we need to do is extrude the parts that are going to be raised so I'm going to bring back this image take a look you can see I can start selecting I'm not selecting the bevels, I'm only selecting the interior. That. Okay. Then we're gonna grow the selection, shift greater than. And then extrude.
then I'm gonna select the faces here hit delete I'm gonna reset rotate this negative 30 that way I can select the faces on this side Oops. and delete you can see what it looks like now okay so let's look from the side and add a couple bevels uh, this way so we can use the multi cut tool go from here hold shift To make the telephone icon and then we need to make the triangles here uh, the triangle here should be easy actually we can do that right now but let's just duplicate this I'm gonna rotate 30 degrees and then shift D shift D all the way around like that combine merge and soften edge clear history I don't think it's that tall, so we'll just squish it a little bit. You can see we have nice bevels. Everything is quads. So now, let's add this triangle uh, parts here. So let's bring back the actual the full image. Get rid of this stuff that we don't need. Just hide that. All right, so what does this look like? Hmm. Let's see. B2 I don't want to have too much detail or it's going to be harder to work with okay and I'm just going to bridge from here to here and then Okay. 
Right, so now that's done. I need to extrude this. So we're gonna extrude and then create a thickness. Like that. And then we need to make sure the interior is contained. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four. Like that. And this is gonna go. Go there. And first this goes here, and then that goes there. Selection delete. Reverse. Okay, so I'm going to fill this in. Uh, before I do that, I need to add actually another bevel. Extrude. Thickness. Okay, offset. That's going to be our bevel. So it's good to do it before we actually start finishing all of the interiors. There. Now we can select the interior here, click uh, fill hole, and then start making connections. this a little bit. Uh, we don't want to have a, an edge that's like this. So I'm just, just going to move this over slightly. There we go. Good. And then some interior bevels. Lots of distance, like that and like that. this up you can see and there's our logo then we need to duplicate this rotate it 120 degrees right okay we should freeze it first then rotate it 120 degrees Okay. Okay, 
question mark. Let's see how all these line up. Pretty good. So let's combine. So we need to combine this where they're touching. And so I'm going to actually delete this one and then this guy. I'm going to set this to keep spacing on W. Snap there, snap there, like that. And then delete the faces in the middle. I'm going to actually make a bevel in here right inside there and it's going to be pretty simple actually because the way I'm going to do it I'm going to delete these edges here like that we can then drop a bevel there and there and then one here and here and the next step we go from here to there and here, here, and then back in there. Same on this side. There. Let's see, it's nice and clean. Got those bevels. Looks good. Select, oops, delete that. And on this side, I want to delete one over. So basically, because we have, we, we can't have it even, otherwise, it won't combine correctly. So we're going to just move the pivot here, duplicate, rotate it 120. Place it there. Shift D, and there we go. Okay, combine, merge, soften edge, clear history. Okay, let's fill this hole in the middle here. Fill hole, and then we'll just connect this way. And we just need to combine this, we actually don't need keep spacing off we don't need to have that and get rid of these triangles that goes for this as well this face here I'm gonna shift right click click poke face and then I'm gonna select this vertex I mean this uh, edge loop uh, tool go from the middle here to here holding shift and not holding shift so hold shift the no shift and now let me get rid of this like that Move the pivot here and then scale. So this is going to leave pentagons here, but pentagons are not bad, especially in this case. They smooth pretty nicely. This will give us nice clean geo. All right, so we also need to close this off because we're going to connect to 
uh, the outside here. We don't need to have all these extra edges, so I'm gonna use this right here. Fill this. One, two, three, four. So we'll make four and just connect. I'm gonna click that, click uh, extract, move it to the here, duplicate, one twenty, then shift D. line this up so I'm going to select the vertices on the bottom snap them here snap those on top okay so this is lined up okay see how that goes so we need to line this up this way now I didn't model it straight but that's okay there's something we can do to line this up so let's say you have an object that you want to line up. I want to line this line straight. So I'm going to use something called a two point snap. So I'm going to select this object and then select this vertex and this vertex. Then in here, I'm going to select this vertex and then this vertex. Then I'm going to go into modify, snap align object, two points to two points. And this will align uh, the objects together I can then delete this one and I can freeze transformations on this one modify freeze and now I know that it is in the perfect spot I can just rotate it 180 and snap here and pivot there and snap that there so now it's perfectly aligned exactly the way we need it we need to close this off so let's do that let's see let's use hmm. let's just close this off like that So I don't want that triangle there, so I'm gonna add a loop. By the way, when you're dealing with triangles, your pivot is not gonna be in the middle of the between the triangles. You have to manually move it. Do that. So now I want to select the outside here and see how many edges I have. To get the edge display, go into display, heads up display, poly count. So we have 45 edges. Now we need to complete this. We need to now uh, complete this so we can see how many edges we have here. This will have to um, add some edges on the ins on the outside here. So let's duplicate, scale, and negative x. Select both, duplicate, scale negative z. Just ne and just put negative one, and then combine and merge. Oops, and soften edge. And then we need to find those little triangles and get rid of them. Okay. 
¿no? Alright, so if I select the edge loops here, we have 96, and this is 45. Definitely not going to work. So, let's see. If I subdivide, I can add two more. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's think about how to add them. So I think I want to add some here. So I'm going to go like that. extra So we need two more. Uh, that's not bad. That is doable. So to add two more, let's see. That'll be on this side, I think. Yeah. All right. So we need. Wait. We need three more. Ninety-six. Ninety-three. Well, I can add two. The third one's going to be hard. Okay, so we have 95. Hmm. We'll leave a pentagon somewhere, and then when we subdivide, there'll be would be good. All right. Now let's let's connect. Oh, I see. I need one here. So now let's 
select let's combine uh, combine clear history and save I'm gonna double click this loop and this loop and I'm gonna select bridge but I'm gonna deselect that and that this way I'll force the bridge on this end like that and then I can just fill hole. Yes. All right, that is done. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If there are any modeling or topology problems you would like me to look at, please check out my Patreon page, and I'll see you guys next time.